The expedition of Ferdinand Magellan, according to the narrative of Antonio Pigafetta, stayed for nine days in Omonhon from March 17, 1521 to March 25, 1521. Those days were according to the Julian calendar and within the season of Quadragesima or Lent in the Pretridentine liturgical calendar. The purpose of my short presentation is to argue for the logical possibility of the celebration of the Catholic Mass within those days. Magellan and his men were in Homonhon. And this can be inferred from the nature of the liturgical celebrations being marked by those particular days and the particular liturgical cost, prevailing liturgical customs at that time. In 2017, a professor, historian at the University of Sevilla in Spain, named Jose Manuel Núñez de la Fuente, published a hitherto unknown document, The Diary of Magellan, the Diario de Magallanes. According to Dr. Dani Herona, one of the first Filipino historians who was able to read this document, when you read it alongside the Chronicle of Pigafetta, you can infer 110% surely that the one speaking is Ferdinand Magellan. For the entry of on the, this particular date, March 17, 1521, Magellan wrote for today in 1521. Magellan wrote in his diary, Viendo de aliviar nuestros enfermos que eran muchos convene hacer fondo en una isla, Vichena, al resguardo de Suloan, en la cual nos hallamos gente que morase, luego de llegar a esta isla llamada Malhom, mande aparejar unas y unas en tierra a fin de curar los enfermos. Allí mismo celebramos la Santa Misa por ser el día del Señor. Y ayon matamos una por quizuela que apresamos en las islas de las velas latinas. The English translation is for his entry on March 17, 1521. Seeing to alleviate our patients who were many, it was convenient to go down, to go deep into an island next to the Sulu and shelter, in which we did not find people dwelling there. After arriving at this island called Malhom, rigging some tarpaulins on land in order to cure the sick, right there we celebrate the Holy Mass for being the Lord's Day, and we still kill a piglet that we caught on the islands of the Latin candles. The gap that was in the chronicle or the account of Pigafetta was supplied by the data from the Magellan's diary. I do not want to identify and analyze the particular liturgical rite according to which the possible masses in Humanhon were celebrated by Father Pedro Valderrama, although there are a few possibilities more probably either the Latin or Mozarabic, also called the Visigothic or Spanish Rite, or remotely the Gallican Rite or the Bragan Rite, since they were used in both Spain and Portugal. However, it should be noted that none of the explorers of the 15th or 16th centuries were sent from the Ardais of Braga, Portugal, the birthplace of the Bragan Rite. Who was Father Pedro Valderrama? According to Father Cantius Kobach's compilation of biographies of those involved in the Magellan's expedition, Father Valderrama was a native of Ecija in Andalusia and assigned to the Galleon Trinidad. Regardless of his religious affiliation, which is in some, for some historians uh, debatable, we can say for certain the following. He was a priest following the liturgical cycle 
according to the Julian calendar. Because the Gregorian calendar will be introduced 61, 61 years later in 1582. Next, he was saying his masses according to the church's liturgical rites. Before these rites became standardized in 1570, according to the decree and missal of Pope Pius V. I will just identify three days in the nine days that Magellan and his men were in Humanhuan. The first day, March 17, 1521. It was a Sunday within the season of Quadragesima or Lent called Passion Sunday in those times. Also, Pigafetta remarked about the said date. In this place, there were many circumadjacent islands, on which account we named them the Archipelago of St. Lazarus, because we stayed there on the day and feast of St. Lazarus. In the early Roman martyrology of the Catholic Church, St. Lazarus' feast day was never celebrated on March 17, but on December 17. In the new general Roman calendar, his feast is not anymore listed, in the Mozarabic liturgical calendar, there is no data that indicates that the feast is celebrated on March 17 or that his feast day was celebrated. It is only in the Eastern Orthodox Church and the Byzantine Catholic Church that the feast of St. Lazarus is clearly celebrated even until now on a fixed date, March 17. In the Orthodox and in the Byzantine Catholic calendars, there are two feast days for St. Lazarus, the friend of Jesus and the brother of Martha and Mary. The fixed date, March 17, and the movable, movable Lazarus Saturday, the day before Palm Sunday. In 1521, Lazarus Saturday was March 23. But basing on the chronology of Bigafetta's account and the context of his statement that it was the day they stayed on the island, it has to be on March 17 the day they landed and named the island Watering Place of Good Signs, and the island with the nearby islets as Archipelago of St. Lazarus. The question, does this imply that Magellan and his team were following in this instance, not the Roman, but an Orthodox or Byzantine liturgical calendar? Day number two, March 24, 1521. This day was Palm Sunday of Holy Week in the Julian calendar. Day 3, March 25, 1521. This day is the Feast of the Annunciation. Pigafetta mentioned this day as a Feast of Our Lady and the day when he experienced a personal miracle. In his narrative, he wrote, The Monday of Passion Week, the 25th of March, and Feast of Our Lady, in the afternoon, and being ready to depart from this place, I went to the side of the ship to fish, and putting my feet on a spar to go down to the storeroom, my feet slipped because it had rained, and I fell into the sea without anyone seeing me. And being near drowning by luck, I found at my left hand the ship, the sheet of the large sail, which was in the sea. I caught hold of it and began to cry out till they came to help and picked me up with the boat. I was assisted not by my merits, but by the mercy and grace of the fountain of pity, according to Pigafetta. Before the 1570 Tridentine reform, the following are the usual customs of priests. For the days of Lent, they celebrate Mass every day, and especially if they, were, if they were first feast days. It was also a celebration, there was also a, a celebration called Misa Nautica, said at sea in rough weather, which were considered a form of Misa Sika or dry Masses. They were not complete or real Masses, but exercise of devotions when circumstances do not allow that a complete Mass be celebrated. It consisted of all parts of the Mass except offertory, consecration, and communion. After the reform of Pope Pius V in 1570, the said practice gradually disappeared. From the above description, the following can be, can be emphasized. 
Before the reforms of the Council of Trent, daily masses was already common, even without the canonical obligation requiring priests to celebrate them. During the said period, the celebration of, sun, of masses on Sundays, feasts, and every day in Lent was very common. What conclusions can we make from the above data? Based on the above information, it is tenable to advance this proposition. Since Magellan and his men stayed in Homonhon for nine days, from March 17 to 25, 1521, and within those days there were three identified liturgical feasts, which were mentioned even in the Pigafetta account, the celebration of Masses during the said events is highly probable. In fact, not celebrating the Mass on the said dates is what is practically unnatural. It is more logical to say that the Holy Mass was celebrated in Monhon in at least three instances, March 17, Passion Sunday and Feast of St. Lazarus, March 24, Palm Sunday, and March 25, Feast of the Annunciation. Then to say that the priest companion of Manchilan, Father Pedro Valderrama, just did nothing to celebrate the said feasts. The import of the said masses in Humanhon for the missionaries at that time can be gleaned from the remarks of Father Alcina regarding a purported mass of Father Cosme de Torres on the said island. In his account, he wrote that Father de Torres was the chaplain of the expedition of Roy Lopez de Villalobos, who arrived in summer and late in 15, 1544. Father Alcina remarking about the Mass in Humanhon wrote, Nor was it less providential to ensure its good fortune that this was the first positive act, that is, the first sacrifice and triumph of Christ crucified on that island, which it seems, as we have mentioned, Satan held as his domain and abode, beginning to expel him from it and from the other islands as numerous as widespread, and as widespread as are, as are all those inhabited by the Visayans, so that the first obstacle having been eliminated, that enemy was thrown out of his dwelling. Due to this, it would, be, it would become easier, and it did become so, as experience had shown afterwards in the spreading of the Christian faith, everywhere with but little opposition and resistance. As we witness all this dissemination today by the fathers, of the Society of Jesus. All in all, we may say that the, with, with this town of Giwan began the faith of the Visayans. With the first sacrifice offered so near to it, it was as if the first cornerstone set in place for the enormous good which would be wrought some time later. It is to be noted that Humanhon, called Isla Encantada by the Spaniards, was considered in local folklore as the home of the god Makapatag, the greatest and most powerful pagan god. The masses in Humunhon had an exorcism effect on it and a sign of the start of Christian evangelization in the country. Thus, the masses in Humunhon were not only first masses in the country, they were also the beginning of the proclamation of the Christian faith in the Philippines.